In 2015, one college senior sat in the crowd at a concert, frustrated by the limits of his camera. What if you could capture every single angle, every single moment without missing a thing? That question drove Lu Jing Kang to launch Insta360, a company that helped creators capture everything around them, eliminating missed moments and shaky footage. But this idea didn't come out of nowhere. It was a response to a market that had lost its way, where old camera brands struggled to keep up with new demands. So what exactly went wrong with the camera industry? And why did it take a student's vision to shake things up? By the early 2010s, smartphones replaced standalone cameras for most people. Phones went from just making calls to taking high quality photos with new features like portrait mode and optical zoom. Birthdays, vacations, even professional photos were now taken with phones. Most find this more convenient. Shipments of digital cameras fell from 121 million in 2010 to 8 million in recent years. The main market for point and shoot cameras was gone. Big camera companies didn't adapt. They kept making minor upgrades for professionals and hobbyists, ignoring most users. At the same time, social media changed what people wanted. Early 360 degree cameras promised to capture everything, but they were expensive, hard to use, and had poor battery life. Most users ignored them. For creators, these tools brought more problems than solutions. Lu Jing Kang, a student at Nanjing University, noticed this. He saw people wanted to connect through photos, not just make sharper images. Neither old cameras nor phones gave a real sense of presence. The market forced people to choose between convenience and creativity. Lu thought a new kind of camera was needed. Simple to use, easy to share, and able to bring people closer to real moments. He didn't try to improve old products, he started from scratch. Lu focused on making things simple and user-friendly, like phones, but with all-around views. He wanted users to feel they were part of the action. This question guided his early work on what became Insta360. Lu Jing Kang's turning point came during a crowded music concert. The lights were flashing, the crowd was loud, and the music filled the space. Lu tried to capture the moment with his camera, but the photos and videos fell flat. The energy of the crowd and the feeling of being there was lost. The technology couldn't capture the real experience. This was more than just missing a good photo. For Lu, it was a real problem. He wondered if it was possible to capture everything around, not just what was in front of the lens. He wanted people watching later to feel like they were there too. Lu had always been interested in solving problems. He grew up in Nanjing and gained a reputation among classmates for fixing tough technical issues. At university, he studied computer science and became known for his creative ideas. Lu also tried small business ideas. He started by renting out cameras for live streaming events, seeing early that people wanted to share in real time. These projects helped him see what was missing from the tools people used. He learned that if the right technology didn't exist, you had to build it yourself. The concert experience brought together his skills and interests. Lu knew software, not hardware. He would need to learn how to make and deliver a physical device. This was a risk for a small team of recent graduates. Still, Lu and his friends decided to start. They wanted to control the whole process, design, development, and user experience. Making hardware brought new problems. Costs were high, and there was little room for mistakes, but Lu believed it was necessary. The team didn't want to make small improvements. They wanted to rethink the camera for a new era. In 2015, they launched the Insta360 Nano. Before the Nano, most 360 cameras were for hobbyists or professionals. They were big, hard to use, and needed a computer for editing. Few people used them often. The Nano was different. It connected directly to an iPhone and was ready for use. There was no need for extra equipment or complicated steps. Anyone with an iPhone could create 360-degree content. The Nano was small and light, about 70 grams. It fit in a pocket like any other accessory. The app made everything simple. Users could shoot, edit, and share within minutes, all on their phone. There was no need to move files to a computer or use complex editing tools. This fit how people already shared on social media. 
In 2015, apps like Instagram and Facebook were where people posted photos and video. The Nano allowed people to capture everything first, then pick a viewpoint later. With Nano, stitching was in real time, and sharing was one tap. Instead of launching in the crowded Chinese market, Insta360 sold Nano overseas first. Users abroad wanted new features and were ready to pay for them. This helped Nano stand out as a quality tool rather than just another gadget. The Nano received attention at CES 2016 and was praised for its easy shooting and sharing features. Facebook chose it as their VR camera for panoramic shots. These successes showed that 360-degree video was becoming more useful for everyday users. But this was just the start. While the Nano fixed many issues, new demands appeared. People wanted smoother, more active footage without extra gear. Creators asked for better ways to capture action. Insta360 would now focus on meeting these new needs, aiming to go further in how people record and share their world. For Insta360, two main features helped move their cameras from simple gadgets to a must-have, low state stabilization and the invisible selfie stick. These changed how people used action cameras and set new standards for what small cameras could do. Shaky video had always been a problem for action camera users. This technology was introduced with the Insta360 ONE X in 2018. While the camera had a sharp video at 5.7K, the standout features was its stabilization. Users could shoot fast, complex scenes without worrying about camera shake. The invisible selfie stick was another key idea. With it, users mounted the camera on a special stick, but the software made the stick vanish from the finished video. The result looked like the camera was floating or filming from a drone. This gave users new ways to create content, showing themselves in action from wide or unique angles. Soon, many creators were using the invisible selfie stick. Shots that used to take expensive equipment could now be made by anyone. People often asked, how was that filmed, when they saw these videos online? Insta360 software first design made things easier for users. With the shoot first, point later method, creators could record in 360 degrees and pick the best angle during editing. As Insta360 grew, the company looked for new opportunities. They added features like AI editing and better camera lenses. As Insta360 grew worldwide, it faced new challenges. Public controversy, tough competition, and questions about user privacy. These issues tested more than just Insta360's products. They tested user trust. In 2024, the company faced backlash over its sponsorship practices. Insta360 shamelessly have been asking, requesting, suggesting content creators to hide that they are sponsored by Insta360. It is also okay to not mention that the video is sponsored if you need to match audio. And so Insta360 is asking me to cut out this shot using the YouTube editor, which basically cuts out the sponsored by as well. In places like the US, this is a serious issue. Viewers expect honest reviews and hidden sponsorships erode trust. The reaction was quick, with people questioning Insta360's reputation in marketing. The company introduced stricter rules and new staff guidelines. While this helped address the issue, regaining trust proved harder. The same year, Insta360 faced a legal dispute with GoPro over patents. GoPro accused Insta360 of infringement, and a US investigation began. Legal battles take time and money, and slow a company's pace. To respond, Insta360 updated its products and started a lawsuit against GoPro in China. These actions showed the company planned to protect its place in the market and adapt to new challenges. Another major concern was data privacy. In 2024, a study claimed that Insta360 cameras and apps collected information, including photos and videos, and sent it to servers in China and Russia. Some of these servers had links to companies under US sanctions. This raised worries, especially in Western countries, about the safety of user data. Sponsorship transparency, legal battles, and privacy concerns became major tests for Insta360. The company learned that modern tech brands must do more than innovate. They must act responsibly, market honestly, follow laws, and protect users. 
The company wants to apply what it has learned from making cameras for creators to solve bigger problems. Education is a starting point. Insta360's tools can help make learning more interactive. For example, Deakin University in Australia uses the Titan to create an 11K 360 VR classroom. Students can explore topics in a way that feels real, rather than just reading or watching a video. These solutions help students engage with lessons and make difficult subjects easier to understand. In healthcare, Insta360 sees ways for its technology to help surgeons practice procedures and for therapists to use immersive environments and treatments. These new uses require high accuracy and reliability, so the company is investing in better AI and camera hardware. And the goal is to make tools that not only record what happens, but also help professionals use the information in practical ways. The company is also working in environmental protection. Insta360 cameras have been used to film ocean life and help raise awareness for conservation. By showing detailed images of coral reefs or animals, these videos motivate people to care about the environment. To support its growth, Insta360 is investing more in research, especially in AI and robotics. They want cameras that can do more on their own, like picking out the most interesting moments or helping users fix problems while filming. This could make capturing and editing easier for everyone. The company is also building a larger ecosystem for creators. They are adding cloud-based tools for editing, storage, and collaboration. This lets users manage their whole workflow from one platform, giving Insta360 new ways to earn money that aren't tied to hardware sales alone. As more people become creators, these services could set Insta360 apart. Lu Jing Kang's approach is focused on steady work and long-term growth, not chasing every trend. He believes lasting progress takes time and a willingness to take risks and try new things. This thinking has guided Insta360 from the start and now shapes its moves into new industries.